that's right, the theme wasn't just for the Fooly Cooly episode. This is the We Hate Anime Podcast, the only anime podcast that makes questionable dietary choices. I'm your host, Mike, and uh, four days after my birthday, I am still cleaning green food dye out of my asshole. Joining me today is the grown man who refuses to eat his fucking vegetables, <laughs> Sudoku. I, ma- I baked chicken, it was pretty good. And a being whose entire existence is carefully maintained with caffeine and cigarettes, Tiruidu. I like VTubers playing tabletop RPGs and I cannot lie. <laughs> and if you'd like to help fund our terrible dietary choices, you can donate to our Patreon by visiting at patreon.com slash we hate anime. Uh, you can also uh, peruse our tiers, which there are currently four tiers. If you decide to donate for as much as $25, you can request an episode. We do have an upcoming uh, episode for our first request. Um, I, I do uh, want to give a shout-out to a patron of that level. Uh, their name is... Please cut out the silence, because I forgot to pull it up. Uh, their name is Gachi the Simp Volume 1 Chan. They are <laughs> a tw- uh, producer level uh, for the podcast. Uh, they donate at least twenty five episode or twenty five dollars a month, and they are requesting us to do an episode on a show called City Hunters. And I hope you look forward to that whenever we have the band together to do it. Thank uh, you. You can't. Yeah. Thank you. A true hero, a real human being. Yeah. Uh, you can though still donate for as little as one dollar a month if you just want to help out, uh, or if you would like a shout out like I just did for Gotcha, you can donate for fifteen dollars a month. And that's all I all I wrote for the intro. God damn it, Doku, I hate you. Man, I don't think I earn fifteen dollars a month. That that would be rough. Uh, I, I I the only person I patron is my friend Nicole, and I patron her for exactly five dollars. Um, I I I chose like I had two options. Okay, I could donate to her Patreon, and she could put me in the credits of her uh, YouTube videos, and that would be cool. Or I could donate to her OnlyFans and get access to tit, tits and ass pics. And I, it took me a long time to decide which of the two I wanted. I think I chose the right one, uh, but only time will tell. If life was a Bioware game, this would be a moral choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my, my dumb ass picked the Paragon option. <laughs> Even down to getting the worst, uh, worst rates compared to the other option. Like a true Paragon would. The only <laughs> thing that you should do more for more Paragon points is to chastise her for the OnlyFans account. Sorry, no, I did th- th- this bit ends here. Sorry, next bit. <laughs> One day no, I will play no. Mass Effect and understand. No, don't. It's a bad game. <laughs> no, no, Ma- okay. Mass Effect One is like it has a pretty decent story and like everything else is poo poo, titty garbage. Uh, Mass Effect Two is like a. It's like a good Star Trek video game. <laughs> and uh, Mass Effect 3 is like pretty good until you get to the end and it's like really bad. I think Mass Effect as a whole has a really cool world, but I don't like the main story. I don't like most of the characters except for Rex, maybe. And I don't really like the gameplay in either of them. So uh, it's a better Wikipedia entry than a game for me. I played like an hour of Mass Effect 3, or no, of Mass Effect 2 when it like first came out, and then uh, I let, I gave it back to my friend, who I borrowed it from. I <laughs> Mass Effect 2 was my first game like that, and I just sat down and consumed it wholesale, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. I, I have never played a Western RPG that I love. So. Have you played Disco Elysium? <laughs> I have not, but yeah! I am interested in it because there's no combat. So there's no way it can be bad. Yeah, That's the only exactly. reason I, I haven't played like Fallout because the combat in those games make me want to die. Yeah, it's pretty slow paced. I can give you that. If you're not into it, I know a lot of people who hate it. Oh, go oh God. When he said Fallout, my brain didn't go to the good Fallouts. It went to the bad Fallouts. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Because I don't think of good video games when I think of Bethesda. It, the good faults are not Bethesda games. <laughs> New Vegas uh, is fine. Uh, uh, according to Bethesda, they invented the first-person shooter. Oh yeah, they made Doom. That's right. I forgot. 
Todd Howard. No, no, they, no, they do, didn't. Shut up. We all know. <laughs> Todd, Todd Coward himself uh, manufactured Doom out of like the the writhing uh, shit stained sex dungeon he calls a bedroom. That's where he Wait. got all the demon designs. <laughs> yeah, they're all based on his wife. Am I right, fellas? Hey. <laughs> God, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Howard. I'm sure you don't deserve this. <laughs> I'm not sorry. She, Miss Howard, what are you doing? You could do a lot better than than Todd. His name was Todd. How is that not the first red flag? He has money. <laughs> he's no, a very, you he's a very charming liar. I, I don't. I don't care if someone. Ha- Bill Gates has money, and that didn't stop Melinda. It stopped her for a few decades. Okay, yeah, but but then the whole Epst- Epstein shit happened, and she's like, <laughs> I forgot that that happened. Like the, the the not the Epstein stuff, but the fact that she divorced Bill Gates. I forgot that happened. Speaking of, they got Ma- McAfee today. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, Sonic killed uh, John McAfee today. Yep. Oh yeah, as of as of recording, it is currently the twenty third of June. Uh, my birthday was four days ago. Um, I only feel like bringing that up because I'm a self-absorbed narcissist. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't give a fuck about Sonic. My timeline was ruined while I was making chili. Yeah, Sonic can go to hell. I, I don't enjoy these games. I like and Sonic. also, on the, on, the, on the topic of narcissism, my birthday was a month ago. Hey, that, yeah. that, that's way too late. Sorry. Happy. Did I get you something for your birthday? Sorry? Did I get you something for your birthday? No, you liar. You implied something and then you didn't. <laughs> Did I do that really? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I I hate that. I, a steam sale starts tomorrow. I, you you I every every everyone listen to this, you get a steam game. If you'd contact me on Twitter, I'm fucking I'm locking my Twitter account right now. <laughs> Oh. oh, but uh, uh, and on today there was a big s- stupid Sonic concert. Yes, um, it was great. I loved it. I uh, Doku, do you like Sonic? Yeah, I do. Like, I I really I love the Sonic games. Why? Because they're good. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Uh, I can't think of a single, and I'm being serious when I say this, and, and, and people call me out, it's fine. I can't think of a single Sonic game that has good game design. Uh, Sonic Oof. Adventure 2 is right there, what do you mean? You literally picked the worst one. It's not the Fuck worst you. one. <laughs> Sonic Adventure and 2 I, is like miles better than uh, Sonic Adventure 1. At least... Not- Okay, for at least like Sonic Three. My man over here eating a pile of shit. It's like it's not that bad. This one has corn in it. Nah. I mean, he doesn't eat his vegetables. Are you really surprised? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Do- Doku can only eat his vegetables in the form of shit particles. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a fan of Sonic for the simple reason that uh, my brain has worms. And every time I make a mistake on any of those maps, I don't think, oh yeah, I'll avoid that next time I play it. I, I'm like, they should give me a map at the start. I should be able to plan everything from the start and go fast all the way. And I know it's not how these games are designed, but fuck you. No, 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 no. You're correct. Every single time in a Sonic level, when you're going right and you hit a speed trap, like a fucking spring that's off screen that you can't see, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> That that why that would you, hasn't why been would a you thing design since Sonic Two? They fixed that in three. I don't give a fuck, <laughs> Just man. Just play three because because everyone's like everyone's like Sonic Two is the best one, and I'm, that's the one I have to live with. <laughs> I, I fucking one. I cannot stand it. I feel like I'm being every single time I'm seeing people enjoy Sonic. I feel like I'm being gaslit. Honestly, <laughs> widescreen does a lot for those games. If, oh, if you play oh, them, play oh them really? You mean if you can see things coming, it makes the game better? Yes! <laughs> I mean, I played Mania no. and it didn't help me, honestly. Uh, oh so, so, so if you, if you want to play Sonic games, uh, they're about to port 
like the first four, like one, two, three, and Knuckles and CD to to consoles and shit with widescreen. So you could do that, or you could just download uh, Sonic Three, Enjoy Island Revisited, and fucking play that. That's great. I've, I'm pretty sure Sonic CD is already on PC because I I got it on st- on a humble bundle for free. Oh yeah, it is. But don't play that there. one because that one's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Alternatively, you could play like a, a good video game, like um, like Spark the Electric Jester. That's a good Sonic game. I who did I invite onto this podcast? <laughs> I invited a platform gamer onto this podcast. I could hardly put up. I could hardly put up with Frog and his in his in his bad takes about Mario being a good video game franchise. <laughs> now I got to deal with you and your Sonic boners. Sonic's great. Spark the Electric hi. Jester too is like. It's fucking great. That say what game you want is about, amazing. Say, say what you want about Mario. Mario Tennis on Game Boy Color. Fucking slapped. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they're, they're, Game Boy Color games were either some of the best games ever made or <laughs> some of the worst. And there's no really any in between. That's uh, true. To be, there's like 15 good NES games and, like, and one of them is Mario. So you gotta give them that. You can't... You, you can't call a game good just because when you press the button it does something. That's all that the game is. You press you press jump and you jump. You press right and you go right. That's the game. Mike, are you oh. about to announce you joined Kotaku or something? <laughs> that, that, that is that you know what? That's right. I am joining Kotaku.com. I'll finally give be finally I'll be paid too much to talk about video games too little. And you still won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you will make you will you will make articles about everything bad video games. They're, they're hi- yeah they're hiring me to be uh, an anime correspondent, and I'm only going to talk about how uh, free is misogynistic. It's the only thing I'm going to talk about. Hell yeah! Finally, somebody stands up to the power of anime aimed at women. <laughs> hey, anime aimed at women, I'm coming for you. You may not be aimed at me, but that's that that's only because you don't realize it yet. You could, uh, you could I, have just I, removed the first three words there. you would be fine. But he is coming. I'm I'm coming. <laughs> I got I, Lardo. Please don't 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 sound clip that and post it to Twitter. I swear to God, I'll do it. Do don't it. Worry about it. <laughs> but yes, uh, gentlemen, what, actual... what, what, why are we here today? <laughs> Well, no, I, 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 okay. hey, 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 let, let's not, let's not, let's not right. act like Sonic. Although I, I do want to point out before before I move on to the next thing I'm going to talk about, uh, Sparks the Electric Jester is worse than Sonic. <laughs> You're fucking. I haven't played the first one, so you might be right about that one. But the second one's really good. It it is wor- It is it is it is a similar concept to Sonic, except instead like, you go fast, but. The screen is ten times closer to you, so you have no idea where you're fucking going. That's not true at all. Hate. You're just bad. I don't know what to tell you. You're bad. You smell and you're stinky, and 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 your your wife told me that you're a bad kisser. Hey, 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 hey! There are some lines we don't cross on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I I cross all the lines. I I fucking I I I am I'm, I'm lonely. <laughs> My Mike is sitting with his nose touching the screen and complaining about draw distance in games <laughs> live right here. How the fuck can you tell I have bad eyesight that clearly? What the fuck? You watch it's, like, it's like you looked Oh no, he saw me. He's probably seen one of the pictures with me with glasses. That's probably why never I, mind. Mike, Mike, I relate to you in many ways, and I also have suffered from. Why are you sitting so close to the TV? Because I can't see mother. Then look closer. I, I'm trying, mother. <laughs> God, I can't, I can't, I can't believe that that all of our parents gaslit us into thinking that that just looking at a TV will make our eyes go bad. Yeah, I mean, with CRTs, it's kind of true. <laughs> but yeah, CRTs nowadays, is pretty bad yeah. for your eyes. Like uh, I remember. You know what? Isn't bad for your eyes. Uh, lab- uh, the library of Ruina. Fuck Hell you. Yeah. Bitches are bad for your eyes. Uh, Doku. Yeah. Uh, not, 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 no, no, not Doku. <laughs> Fuck you, Doku. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tired. Tidawidu! Uh, you have been playing a lot of, and I've been playing a fair amount of Library of Ruina. Yep. Uh, I want you to, I want you to, to walk, because you're a lot farther in that game than I am. What are you, 60 hours in? Yes, uh, 62 right now, I think, because I played a bit today. I got this game as a gift from a friend, Saf, if you're listening, I love you, man, uh, for, for my birthday. And he said, hey, uh, some friends of mine have been talking about it, and it looks like your jam, uh, like lore-wise and stuff. And I'm like, okay, as a courtesy to not forget about it, I'll install it and play it for an hour. And here I am right now, <laughs> about to finish it. Uh, it's a Korean visual novel slash deck building game about being a sociopath that invites people to kill them in a cyberpunk city. But don't worry, most of them deserve it. It's it's really... It, it, uh, this is an anime podcast, so I will tie it back to anime. It's strikingly similar in concept and execution to an anime that no one's heard of called Hell Girl. I've heard of it. The the, uh, the the opening slaps. I haven't heard yes. of it. Of, of course you did. You 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 didn't watch you didn't watch anime on obscure movie television channels on extended cable broadcasting networks at like four in the morning like I did. Like back in, back in the day back back when I was a kid, you had to have satellite TV to watch anime, and you were just watching whatever you could fucking find. I've watched Negima. No one should watch Negima. Fuck Negima. Hey, I've read Negima. <laughs> okay, but, okay. Well, here's here's the thing, Ted. You need to understand about Negima. Ne- <laughs> you you read Negima and it's fine. But there are two Negima adaptations, Negima and Negima and, and both of them are adaptations of different parts of the manga. And I don't mean like one's the beginning and one's the end. I mean they a- they adapt they adapted the harem stuff into one show, and they ad- adapted the action stuff in a separate show. That sounds like a horrible idea. It's it, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> uh, it, it makes for one show that's really boring, and one show with more characters than it than it, it has anything to introduce to, and it kind of expects you to watch both, but you don't want to. Yeah, just uh, just read the manga, or better yet, read the doujins. Oh, I, I would, uh, so Doku, just, just cause it, you don't know what Negam is. Oh. Um, it's, it is, it, it's a manga slash a- a- anime series about, uh, 12 year old who, who gets, uh, like horned up by a bunch of like 16 year old women. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. He, he's magic and he's British. He's cool. Oh, he's British? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's British. It's it's like it's like reverse colonization. He's got no! the magic stick. <laughs> Don't say that about molestation. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Sometimes, uh, sometimes when there's grass in the field, you play ball. Oh, that! Oh, that! <laughs> oh, that! Oh, that, oh, that <laughs> That was like needles coming out of my throat. <laughs> this is what is this podcast fucking become? Labor, li- Library of Ruina. Good game, it's, play it. <laughs> it's it's really cool. Um, I was surprised because uh, Tid Tid posted an out of context screenshot, and he was like. Oh man, I hope this doesn't spoil anybody. And it literally was completely nonsensical. <laughs> yeah. And when I. And, and and when he was like, "Is it cool if I spoil things?" He then proceeds to tell me the coolest thing ever about like magical girls who are out of their prime, who have to fight the dark versions of themselves to combine into a stronger version of themselves to defeat the evil. And it's like, wow, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That game has a lot of stuff that comes out of left field because it has a lot of short stories about people that come to get their shit shit wagged by you. And at some point, there is just a gang of guys in Greek comedy mask, you know, smiling, that smoke, and all of their attacks are based on smoking, and they talk like Ned Flanders. And at at that point, I was like, yeah, I I guess, sure, whatever. (laughs) I've seen worse already. 
it, it's it's just it's a such an interesting game. Uh, I. I I, I don't know how though like I I I feel like I'm currently getting close to the end even though I'm about not even ten hours in, uh, because it feels like it's ramping up to like uh, every every um, every couple of missions you you like you're like the urban because it's kind of based on like it's okay what was the name of the game that this is a sequel to? Uh, Lobotomy Corporation. Okay. This is a sequel to uh, Lobotomy Corporation. Lobotomy Corporation is an SCP creating simulator. Well, sort of. It's more like there are. You have to manage them because the whole premise is that by uh, people coming in contact with these weird things, you can generate energy. And this is cyberpunk, so you need a lot of energy, and human casualties don't matter. And there is like this ascending order of shit you have to deal with. Like, oh yeah, this is a dark version of the girl with the matchsticks, like uh, some proper Lovecraftian shit towards the end game. And. And this game is like it's the aftermath of that game. Like there, there's, I I just got to the point where it points out that every character I've met so far is a character in the first game. Yep. Uh, which good on you, video game. Uh, you, I you didn't point that out to to someone like me who's new until like f- seven hours in. Like that, a lot of a lot of games like that would just be like play their hands super hard. Yeah. Uh. I, I, it may, this game makes me really interested in the original game because, uh, you're kind of dealing with the world the first game was set in, Uh in like, uh, it's so fucking weird. I don't even really know how to describe the world and the writing and I'm, and I'm barely far enough in there to have like a concrete idea of what everything is. I would say it's kind of cyberpunk but it also stretches the technology to such levels that it's basically fantasy as well so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's kind of like it's it's definitely like fantasy punk um if i were to make up a fake genre for it uh all, just... all, all genres are fake don't worry about it true true genre is a uh boring and stupid identifier for media that we only use to help us find things that we like it, they are categories and not definitions um anyway i, I sorry i i have a i have a beef to pick with the concept of genre i've had i've had i have fights with people over that shit same one day i'll make a video on it but first i need to gather my thoughts <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this this game, it's just the, the card battling. It, it, it's really weird. It has a gotcha mechanic, yep. but you don't pay money for it. Yeah, it's basically booster packs, and luckily they had like enough sense to say, hey, you can get this, 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 this many of these cards from this, and that's it. You can like grind to the point where you equip everyone with the same shit, so you need to diversify and also it means if you just do one fight three or four times you'll get everything don't worry about it yeah and also there are some things that you can only get one one or three of yep uh which are like the bodies uh because in the library of ruina like the whole concept is that in the light the library is a place where people who are looking for something go to find it and uh they only go there if the library has the thing that they're looking for um so they'll get an invitation they'll go there and they're looking for their book uh to get that book they have to defeat you uh which uh it's not even really it's not how the game works though if like if they beat you they don't get to escape uh you just uh respawn and try again yep uh but after you beat them, they turn into books, and you can wear their skin like armor. <laughs> this game's really, like, c- conceptually, and in some cases visually, really fucked up. Yep, yep. It's very much the case of nobody's a hero in this world. You just do what you want to to further your ambition, and the further it goes, the more fucked up it can get. So, enjoy. look forward to that, I suppose. Like... Uh, <laughs> To, to give you an idea, I fought a monster. Uh, it was part of like my. Uh, there, there, there are like two different ways that you. There are like two different things. There's like the main campaign where you just fight battles with the decks you make, and then there is uh, the level up battles, which are more puzzle than battle. 
Yep. Um, and I today, or maybe it was yesterday, <clears throat> I fought a I fought a little kid with no skin, and uh, there was a tarp in the background of many faces, and it was bleeding skin, and this this body would just move behind it, and depending on when I chose to do my roll to attack him, he would either destroy me. Or take extra damage depending on which face he had stopped on, uh, and and shit like that's all over the game, and it's really upsetting. And there's tons of interesting lore, even in like the descriptions of some of the attacks and abilities. Yep. Um, it's even the, really fucking cool. The fact that every single like uh, key page, so the skin as you said, you get for your characters comes with a short Dark Souls esque story from that world as well is the coolest shit. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, if you go to the Cadenza, I think it's called, option, you, you can re read all the key pages you collected. Hell yeah! Fuck, I know what I'm doing after I'm done with the podcast. I'm going to spend four hours reading all my key pages. <laughs> uh, this game's really cool. And the Steam sale starts... Uh, well, it's already going to be going on by the time you listen to this. Uh, yep. If it's on sale, pick it. I mean, I don't think it will go on sale. The first game probably will. Uh... You should pick it up because this this this. I mean, it's not that expensive either. It's only like thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's also an early access, and it is, it is pretty raw. It is it is pretty raw. <laughs> like, and I don't mean raw as an awesome, although it is. It's like there are like scene transitions that are are that don't exist. Uh, there are like hard loading like hitches that just happen occasionally. Uh. And it's not like a performance-intensive game or anything. Like, I'm pretty sure you could run this thing on a potato. Yeah. It's just... It's missing a lot of the, like... The, like... Tiny things. And I think that's okay. I think it's, like... Uh, I, I bought it when Tid said that the story was, like, all the way done. Like, that's enough for me. It's good enough just on that end. I think it can use uh, some quality of life features. Like, for example, switching equipment between characters when you get, like, 50 of them later is a nightmare. If you yeah. want to keep uh, everyone uh, up to level, but aside from that, yeah, it's a, it's well designed. It never bugged out on me, so you know, kudos for in the game. Oh yeah, and then like all the like little visual bugs I'm talking about are things most people won't notice. I'm just incredibly anal. <laughs> um, like I, <laughs> I was I was made to be a YouTuber. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but uh, the the. It's just a really cool game. Uh, I have most of my gripes are like pretty minor. Um, the tutorial sucks. Yeah, that that's like going to be half of the video I'm planning. Like explaining all mechanics that show up at the beginning in a voice and with pictures, so that it's easier to grasp. Because I'll be honest, I was confused in the first two hours of how shit works. Oh yeah, no, same. But like it. Once you know how it works, it's a thousand times more simpler than the than the, the fucking tu tutorial was trying to convey it as. Yep. Um, but yeah, if you like if you like like card battling games and you are interested in like pretty, here's the deal: if you don't care about visual novels, there's a skip button, and it's a really big skip button, so you can't miss it. So you can just skip everything and play the game if you wanted to. Also, uh, but why would you, honestly? <laughs> But the cool thing is, if you do choose to do that, you can at any time, like, uh, like rewatch scenes. Yep. Uh, so, like, hey, if you if you skip through all the game and you get to the end and you're like, wow, w w what's this weird Eldritch Abomination? You can go back and look. I know there's a weird Eldritch Abomination in there. You don't even have to tell me. All the characters are, all the fucking characters in this game are named after nodes on the Sephiroth. Yep. Sephiroth. Uh, I. I think the, they're all based, because it was also a theme in Lobotomy Corporation, it's all based on the Clive of the Tree of Death in Gnostic religion, and they're all named after that. So, so there's like Hod, Netzerach, uh, Gebura, so on and so forth. So if you like weird uh, sephirotic bullshit, uh, you can enjoy this video game. Um, for people with brainworms who like to roll dice. Yep, that's us. Speaking of brain wars, hey Doku, how's Strive? Oh, uh, I actually like Strive a lot. 
Uh, I know a lot of people are really upset about the, some of the some of the systems because it is very different from uh, Guilty Gear, uh, Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R and Guilty Gear X Third Revelator Two. But uh, rip to them, I'm having a great time. <laughs> That's good. I'll probably play it when it's on sale for like ten dollars and nobody plays it online anymore. But I'm a cheapskate when it comes to fighting games because it's not my primary genre. So that's fair. I, <laughs> I, out. I always jump in late. I showed out like fucking eighty five bucks, <laughs> uh, so I can mm. play it early and have the season pass. Oh. Because uh, I like to go to tournaments and shit. Because how fun. are you enjoying the dolphins? <sighs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, guys. Y'all keep talking. Uh, I gotta go use the bathroom. Okay. If I remember correctly, you were on a tournament for Strive, right? Like, quite recently? Yes! Uh, like, the week it came out, I drove, mm -hmm. like, an hour out of town to go to a local tournament. And that was a lot of fun! I got to see a bunch of people, like, a bunch of my friends who I haven't seen in over a year. And that was great. Uh, I got... I saw that I saw that clip you posted with like the double miss with the super uh, on both <laughs> sides and then the double KO. Like, it's hype shit. Yeah, that was... Uh, so, the way that tournament worked is we had... Uh, there were two... There were like two locations and then uh, at the end, like, the top players from both locations like played in a bracket. And so, we got done before the other location did. So, they just had people doing money matches. And so, like, that was me and my friend cranberry uh we did like a first to five for like 10 bucks who won actually because i only saw the clip uh she did cranberry did uh, I, I lost, lost 10 bucks i lost like five to three yeah uh, but yeah Strive's well, great. at least now, now that you don't have ten dollars you won't make a something awful account so you know a silver lining <laughs> um but yeah, Stripe's great. Uh, I think... I honestly do think, like, if you're, like, interested in getting into fighting games and don't know where to start, mm -hmm. uh, Stripe's great. I think the floor, the, like, ranking system it has is really good, while the lobbies suck. I think the ranking system that it has is really good with those, like, ten floors of ranks. That's interesting, because on topic of lobbies, uh, the movie we'll discuss today, I guess we'll get to that when Mike gets here, Yeah, it has striking similarity to all the shitty fighting game lobbies I've seen in the past decade, and I wonder if that was an influence. Oh. And if so, it's the most mismatched influence that could be. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me, because this, because Summer Wars came out in like 2009, so it nine, wouldn't surprise nine, yeah. me if, like, People who worked at fighting games saw the saw this movie and was like, "Oh yeah, this is cool." Hey guys, here's this movie: how a centralized network for everything led to catastrophe, and so we'll make all our game lobbies based on the same concept. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what else is there? Did anything happen in the past? Oh, you you've been on the podcast two weeks ago. I wasn't, so <laughs> two weeks. Uh, I haven't done shit besides play Guilty Gear and Final Fantasy XIV, and I haven't done anything in Final Fantasy XIV besides just grind out Dark Knight. <laughs> no, that's the way to live. Like, no. I got into fourteen. like, I'm, like, like level 40, and of course I then brushing out doing crafting and stuff, and I have this feeling that I can, like, come back someday, play a bunch of it and come back, but because of the way my attraction to that game works in bursts, I will never go for a subscription, and I think that hurts me quite a lot. Uh, I think that's fair. I've put, like, 400 hours into that game. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. I think the best way to go about it, because uh, with, with me, what I've had to do is just, like, get a subscription and then play through, like, an expansion. Mm. And then stop, and then like take a break, and then play for. I've, I've heard a lot of good things about, especially expansions, because they say, yeah, I, ARR is pretty boring plot wise, and they write. Yeah. So when I get to Heaven's Ward, which is still free, I hope this will change. But man, I have to get there. Uh, a Rome Reborn is rough. I think it's pretty rough until they introduce Sid, and then mm -hmm. it starts to pick up a little bit. Heaven's Ward is great the whole way through. Okay. Heaven Sword is, I think, the best Final Fantasy game since at least Final Fantasy X. 
And then I hear okay. Shadowbringers is even better. I'm sorry. Yeah, Shadowbringers fucking eludes me because I know maybe five people who have played both FF14 and Pathologic. And every time they get to Shadowbringers, they say they're the same. And like, I'm like, how? <laughs> how do you connect these ideas? What is happening in there? I need to see. But I'm I'm also cheap and I don't want to play for, for pay for a subscription. So that's fair. <laughs> <coughs> it's because uh, yeah, it's like thirteen bucks for a month, and so that's yeah, that's a lot. Okay, see, see here about for context, my earnings right now are like three hundred dollars a month. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's that's yeah, yeah. I can't blame it will... you. <laughs> it will get better in July, but I need to survive until then. Which is like a week, but yeah. Yep, that's kind of where I'm at right now, because I, I haven't gotten the job yet, technically. But I've applied uh, for a job that has a much better pay than what I'm doing now. You're a contractor, right, for something? Um, no. <clears throat> I work like part-time, like $10 an hour for oh. a casino. And there's another position at that same casino that's opened up. That's like a salary position like full-time okay with benefits. Yeah. so i'm hoping for that but we'll see yeah good luck with that yeah i have been teaching english for the past five years last year i got an office job which uh, sorry two years ago i got an office job uh which was nifty it was mostly translating i just sat on my ass until a project appeared and it was nice and of course the pandemic started a half a year after pandemic they went like tito you're doing a great job, but we don't have enough material for you to work eight hours a day. You're fired. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh. In the middle of an economic crisis, huh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm back to teaching. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah the... But now I, w- I will be talking to British people <laughs> on a hotline, and they pay much better, so. Okay. At least they pay better, even if they are British. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to earn, like... Three times as much money as I earn right now. Oh yeah, so, no, that's that's it, always good. That 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 was a no-brainer. Fucking Mike just not peeing before we start recording. I can't believe this. That's a long pee. I have to say. How long is that stream? Speaking of streaming. Uh, you've been uh, playing hey, uh, Yakuza 7 recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on twitch.tv slash council mechanica. That, that, that's a dif- difficult name, so just look for council spacebar me- mechanic and you'll find it. Uh, I've been streaming Yakuza like a dragon. I'm co hosting with my friend Void. And we've been playing different games. We finished Disco Elysium. We played Outer Wilds. And now we're playing also Disco Elysium. Uh, he is playing. I'm commentating. And uh, Yakuza is the opposite of that. <laughs> and man, Yakuza 7 is a fantastic game that I wish I could experience on my own time and not while talking to three other people at the same time because it makes it very hard to focus on cutscenes. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh... I played it, like, I beat it, like, two months ago. I finally played through it. Uh, I love that game. I think that is mm-hmm. the best Yakuza game. I played 1 and 2 on PS2, then 0, because I couldn't find 3 anywhere when mm-hmm. I wanted to buy it on PS3. Uh, and by the time it appeared on PC, I got fired. So <laughs> now I'm playing 7. Uh, and I have to say, uh, 7 is probably the best when it comes to like retaining my attention Mm -hmm. because with all the traditional Yakuza games I I have brain worms again so I start the main story and then they say hey side stories unlocked I'm like okay yeah I guess I'm stuck here for 40 hours before the main plot moves on Uh, but with uh, 7 because it's a JRPG I feel like I can do it at my own pace and I won't lose anything so that's much nicer yeah uh as a seven's great, I don't. While I love, I played every mainline Yakuza game. While I oh. love them, I don't like Yakuza combat. <laughs> oh. So when <laughs> Yakuza Seven has a turn-based, uh, combat system, is is good. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think it's uh, me- contradictorily it makes some stuff a lot faster Mm -hmm. because there is a leveling system so you just one-shot some fuckers uh and it's still worth it because of the money and xp uh 
Uh, whereas in traditional Yakuza's, after you hit some threshold, it's very much like, okay, I guess there's nothing of interest here until the final boss, who will kick my ass because I forgot half the mechanics because I don't need them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the job system, too, is is really good. It's Man, ju- just the fact that all of them give characters different clothes means yep. so much for me because it freshens shit up. I love it. I think the only the only thing I'm not a big fan of with Yakuza Seven is there is one optional party member mm-hmm. that is locked behind the like management mini game that I did not do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the business. Yeah, I just got her today actually. No, I do not. I because that so, there's something like that in like every Yakuza game, and I just never engage mm-hmm. with it because I don't True. find it fun at all. And there's a party member. It was really, really good because the female there's you get two female party members and they both have really good jobs that none of the other party members have access to. Yep, girls get superpowers because uh, idol is like the best healer job in the game, and then like dealer is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think when it comes to the management games, Yakuza, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember in Yakuza 2, they first introduced it, it was very bare bones uh, with managing a cabaret club and everything. In the Zero, I liked the cabaret uh, more than the real estate shit for a very simple reason. I could play dress up with the girls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the moment I just kitted them all out the way I wanted and I was done, I was like, oh, I, I guess I have to play the mini game now. Okay. <laughs> I think that's in 6, too. I think there's a part in 6 where you have to do that. Mm-hmm. You have to do, like, a cabaret thing. It might be 6 or 5. I don't know. Like you ever played... Uh, in English, it was called Resonance of Fate. In Japanese, it was End of Eternity. You ever played that? I have not. I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. But I... I don't know anything about it besides just the name. Yeah, it's a, it's a good game. It's also like pseudo cyberpunkish. One tower, town build around it mm-hmm. uh, vertically because atmosphere got fucked. It's uh, it has a very interesting combat that you shoot and run out a lot, a lot. And because it's a long game, it's like hundred hours. It also gets stale at some point, but. <laughs> Every chapter, characters get new clothes, and they do- are not tied to stats at all. You can do whatever the fuck you want, and I was there just for that, and it was great. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you can, you, you can, ch- because de- by default they all are blondes with blue eyes, but you can like give them contact lens and change the, the hair, color of their hair, and you can just like manage it on all levels. It was great, slapped, great game. Play it. It's on PC. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah. It, I never, I never, I never played that much of that game. Um, uh, I I only played probably about maybe ten ten hours of it, like way back in the day. Uh, also, um, I'm gonna cut this part out. I I am I am back. But when I got back, I uh, I was. <laughs> I'm very, uh, you guys maintain like a, a pretty good conversation that felt really natural. Uh, and it, it's so natural so that it felt, it was hard for me to butt back in. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, was... I'm back from pissing. <laughs> uh, I, Lardo, please, please cut out me saying going to the bathroom and just, and just, you know, we'll, we'll keep going from there. Uh, <laughs> so, Summer Wars. Summer Wars. Yeah, uh, before, before that, I have to... <laughs> I have to make it sound like I didn't just disappear. Uh, so let me just say, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. I sorry I didn't really talk for like the last bit. I've only played one Yakuza game, and uh, I've also only like my experience with fighting games is, is literally just uh, Soul Calibur, which I'm kind of okay at, and nothing else. Uh, I'm not good at fighting games, so I do who not do, play them. It's who do you mind in Soul Cal? I don't want to tell you because you're gonna make fun of me. <laughs> who do you mind in Soul Calibur? Tell us. Go on. I play Nightmare. Oh, that's oh, fair. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that was fine. Everyone, everyone calls me cheap. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's because they're scrubs. Big sword goes funk. You can, you can't go yeah. wrong with that. That's, it's weird how that's okay. such a universal thing that like everyone has played Soul Calibur. Yeah. Especially Soul yeah. Calibur 2. <laughs> yeah, man, I played so much Soul Calibur 2 with my cousins on PS2. That game slapped. Mm. Soul Calibur, like, 
I I personally believe, and I know people will disagree, I don't think there's a bad Soul Calibur game. There are ones that have bad story modes, but each Soul Calibur game is always fun to play, except for, like... Except for if you pick Yoda in that in Soul Calibur in Soul Calibur Four, go fuck yourself. No, Soul Calibur Five is pretty fucking whack. Hey, hey, okay, listen, listen. I understand that there isn't implied incest, but direct incest in the story. But that doesn't mean it's a bad video game. It's kind of it's kind of not good. I'm sorry. That, that's a bit whack. Six is good though, so at least we have that. Look. Also, also, Calibro games have Ivy in them, so they're good games. That's true. <sighs> she she just gets hotter with every game. And six yeah. has six is two B. So it's yes, even better. six does have two B. The yep. only the only character in a Soul Calibur game that is probably more attractive than Ivy. Mm. Honestly, I always. It's not that I dislike 2B's design, but I got so tired of everyone thirsting after her <laughs> that I don't find her as attractive anymore. It's it it's gets... all it's it's all in the thighs, man. It's literally all I need is like I don't need like I only need an I only like an okay ass. But mm-hmm. you get like you have some fucking some chunk, some like good shapely thighs that I can just go ah ah I'm, I'm turning. Uh, I'm going straight. I'm turning straight right now <laughs> in this in this podcast. I am now seventy five percent straight. Women call me. <laughs> there, there is a reason why Twitter fucking exploded when Chun Li came out in Fortnite. Yeah, that's true. Because Listen, I don't, that shit I don't was ridiculous. <laughs> Girls, that, if you if you have thighs, one day I will want to die, so I need my neck snap. Just you know, uh, if you want to on, on that action, call me. <laughs> I'm telling your fiance. <laughs> I I hope she'll die before me, so she doesn't have to see that. <laughs> Oh god, speaking of dying before the end of our lives, uh we watched this 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 week a fantastic anime film uh called Summer Wars by uh noted director Mamoru Hosoda. Um that with it. I love this movie. Yeah, it's great. It's a very good movie. I don't think I was wowed by it, but I didn't think I wasted two hours on it. It's very pretty. It has very nice themes. So yeah, good movie. It it you could it really feels like like. So I know neither of you are super familiar with Hosoda. Like I mm-hmm. I, I know that uh, Doku, you've seen one other Hosoda film. Yeah, I've seen his One Piece movie. Oh, go go to hell and die! I've seen like all the One Piece uh, movies. You want to talk about the One Piece movies? <laughs> We already did that episode You've and about you missed two of them. it. Most of them were good. <laughs> <laughs> You've talked about... T- t- fuck you. One Piece is bad and we're talking about good things today. <laughs> That's the first Kosoda movie I watched for the record. Uh, wait, you've never seen the Digimon movie? Nope. I haven't seen the Digimon movie. What the fuck? That's like, Digimon... It starts with Angela and Akanda. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so okay, so Digimon uh, the movie, uh, just just for some like Hosoda primer, uh, Digimon the movie was like three OVAs mushed together and infused with ska music to make a Digimon feature length film. Uh, one of those OVAs was uh, Digimon War Games. Um, if you've ever seen Digimon War Games, and and I I, I will I will continue making this joke. Uh, Digimon War Games is the exact same plot of Summer Wars, and I don't mean like like Bell. We're 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 watching this primarily because Bell's coming out soon, and yep. I want to get ahead of the the Twitter algorithm or the YouTube algorithm. Uh, Bell is like thematically similar to Summer Wars. Summer Wars and Digimon War Games are the exact same movie. There is a rogue AI destroying the uh, the infra- infrastructure of the internet, and the entire climax is uh, playing uh, fighting them in such a way and stopping a uh, a satellite or missile from space uh, from hitting and destroying our protagonist. It is it is the exact same 
But Summer Wars is a lot better because it's not Digimon. <laughs> That's always a buff when something is not Digimon. Yeah. I, I say that, but I, I love Digimon a lot. It's one of my favorite franchises. Uh, it's just most of it, all, most of all Digimon is sucks and is bad. The only thing I know about Digimon is that I played a card game of it. It's pretty cool. And I played a PS1 game of it that wrecked my ass when I was a child because I didn't speak English. <laughs> Uh, and, and that, 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 that's even more fucked up because in Digimon, there's a lot of made up words that are combinations of other words. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so Summer War Games, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple film. Um, conceptually, like the entire premise of the movie, there's, there's an A plot and there's a B plot. The A plot is that our, we got our main character who's, who's, who works as like a, an, uh, 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 a network admin for... Uh, what do they call the the internet like video game thing infrastructure? Oz. Eden? You kill, I think. Oh, Oz. Oz, yeah. They call it Oz. Oz. Oh yeah, Oz. Like, yeah, like the, uh, yeah. he works for like a, like as a network admin for Oz, and uh, one day, uh, towards the like it's like the last day of summer or whatever, and the coolest girl in school. Uh, rushes to the nerd room to recruit one of the nerds uh, to uh, go with her to her grandmother's uh, birthday party. And it turns out that the reason why she wants that person to come along is because she told her 90-year-old grandma that the next time... that that before she dies, she's going to be able to see my uh, husband. And oops-a-doodle... Uh, Grandma got better. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> now I have to find a boyfriend. Uh, and this this is such a, like a, a really cliche a plot, um, but I think what really sells it is the uh, Jinu Uchi family. They're great. I ha- except for one. I have never seen a family in. <laughs> e- okay, okay. Even that one cousin who wants to fuck his cousin. Is like yep. still an okay guy. He just wants to fuck his cousin. I mean, he's a cop, so that's two negatives here. Okay, hey. but he's a Japanese cop and cultural relativism. <laughs> you yeah. What well, what was that conviction uh, rate over there? Ninety nine percent. A cab means all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mothers are gonna like that one. Leave it in, Lardo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, the Gino be, 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 no, before we go on about the, uh, on the topic of the Gino Uchi family, does any of you have big families, like, the same size, or uh, approachable? Not near this size, no. Uh, I have I a haven't. rather large family on my dad's side, though. Mm-hmm. I haven't talked to my family in two years. That's fair. My dad has eight siblings, and I swear, despite the fact that this was happening in Japan and I'm in Poland, this shit was so relatable. The only thing that was missing was the fact that the great-grandfather of this family was already dead, so there was no scene of my dad and him fist fighting because they got drunk. (laughs) I mean, uh, I mean that 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 basically almost happened like two times this movie with other characters. It's yeah. True, true. Uh, the Jinuichi family is I can I in in I, I want to even say in media I can't imagine a family that that is as big as this one, but also like there's there's no characters even the little kids like even just their designs uh, like they're just so diverse. And yep. real feeling, yeah. They yeah, all they, you can you, like I, I like I have a relatively like I said I have a relatively big family on my dad's side. It's not like nearly the size of the family in this fucking movie, but like uh-huh. yeah, these are like real people. Like this is like yeah. a this is a pretty normal like family dynamic. I think it's very cool that you can see like the life choices of the older family members in their designs. Like the guy who sells fish is like buff and always stunned because he's fishing. The guy that works for the government is pretty standard. That uh, that doesn't throw it to their eyes. But you can also see that their kids or grandkids look quite similar to them, but not exactly right. Yeah. So it's a very cool visual design, I think. Uh, 
Yeah, no, you can look at everyone in this family, and you can tell they're related, but they don't, like, the, that's a big issue in, especially in anime, where, like, here's, here are these two siblings, and it's the same design, but one of them has longer hair and squint, and, and thinner eyes. Yeah. I almost said squint to your eyes, because uh, <laughs> I'm a racist. You didn't have to admit that. <laughs> Uh, Redneck Mike comes back to the podcast. Yeehaw! <laughs> my my mama and my papa were cousins. <laughs> that's a I mean, real. That, that's, that, that's real. That's real. My, that is oh. a real fact about me. Oh, oh. no! Well then, that, that, that movie is re- marriage. <laughs> then that movie is relatable for you <laughs> with all that cousin fucking. <laughs> Uh, okay. My my parents were only like related by by marriage. It okay. wasn't it was not real, not real no. incest. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> now, man, I get really scared because I remember when I met my fiance. She, uh, my fiance's family was like six hundred kilometers from my family, and the moment I started talking to her mind, it was like your last name. I think I I recognize it somehow. I need to make some calls, and I was like, Oh, oh no. no! Please don't <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Oh, like, like, luckily, it turned out that no, it's just that uh, her dad came from the same parts of the country as my where my grandparents live, but they're not related. So yeah, small world, small country. I had the I had the exact same thing happen to me. I was dating this girl for like six months, and mm-hmm. I had already had unprotected marital sex with her, uh, and uh, she was like, "Hey, let's go meet some of my extended family. Like, we we're gonna have like a little weekend out in the." And uh, there's a there's a town called Pocahontas. Uh, of course, it's called Pocahontas. That's the most Southern American thing it can be called. <laughs> um, and and we went creaking and uh, creaking. Uh, what uh, Doku probably knows what creaking. I is. I have no fucking uh, clue what you're talking about. Oh Jesus Christ! Is I, it when I, your ass creaks? Okay, no. Uh, creaking is whenever you you all get together and you just go to a undisclosed location on a creek and you just go swimming. But it's not like, and I know what you're thinking, well, that sounds fine. Except, like, there's been no development, so, like, you're just standing on sharp-ass rocks that are cutting into your heels. And uh, everyone's getting bit by mosquitoes and various bugs. Uh, it's good good time. Creaking. You should try it. Also, don't try it. You'll be miserable. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I've never heard it called that. Uh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it so- sounds like my country family going to swim in the shitty river nearby the, with the beach that is made out of half of rocks. So, yeah. I, I, that, s- same word. I, I, I first but, I thought uh, you were going to talk about noodling. I was like, That's <laughs> different, right? The fuck uh, is noodling? But, oh, God. Uh, it, it, noodling is just when you go swimming with a, with an inflatable noodle. Ah, okay. Um, no. But, yeah, <laughs> I, I was... I was dating this girl for like six months and we went to go do that and then she was like oh let's let's go hang out with my aunt I was like okay and her aunt's got like a little horse farm and we went and we we like talked with I was about to say talked with her childhood horse that's not what you I wasn't talking to a goddamn horse what am I the horse whisperer fuck Uh, but she was like "Uh, eh, this is my aunt aunt blank little and when she said oh, that, no. I looked at her and was like, bitch, you didn't tell me you were related to Littles. You know what my last name is. <laughs> I, I felt like I got fucking, uh, uh, like, like tricked into an incestuous relationship. <laughs> and, no, and no, 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 don't, don't worry. She's from the Stewart branch. Ha. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, you rat bastard. You're the, you're the mouse bastard. <sighs> Genoichi clan. These the fucking god damn it, fucking hell. Let's go boys. The cool, the cool thing about the Genoichi clan is that like it's this big giant family, and because it's been around for hundreds of years, it has incredibly deep ties to the current Japanese government and shit. So when like the shit hits the fan in the film, which is the B plot, which we haven't really talked about, like grandma fucking go like ah she fucking steps up and she just starts calling random people who are vaguely related to healthcare services and they're like hey i know it's i i know i the last time i talked to you was 50 years ago and i hit you in the face but 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 (laughs) come on get some emergency services to these old people yeah Yeah. she's great i love her (laughs) grandma the best character grandma was really cool and surprisingly not racist or uh, biased in any other way 
Uh, according is... to according to the subs I was watching, uh, she said trans rights. Yeah, she she exactly. seems like a very progressive grandmother. Just looking, which at is her. really weird considering she, World War Two happened when she was twenty. I mean, you get irradiated and you'll start believing in anything. <laughs> that was a really fucked up thing to say. What yes. the fuck? Holy shit! What is wrong with me today? What the fuck? You needed a buff. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> yeah, the oh, buff God. energy is present in the chat room, and it invades different people at different times. I've been I, no, I've been racist. I've been transphobic. What's next? Am I gonna talk about the, the minorities I don't like? Wait, that's racist. I've already done it. I've done all the bigotries. <laughs> Hey, hey, if you want to talk about Polish people, I can leave. Don't worry. I will talk about Polish people to your face. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I feel like you have more to say about Polish people than I do. Hell yeah, I do. This country sucks. <laughs> Which, to, today we had a standing ovation in the government for someone saying that LGBT people are scum. So, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, summer wars, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! So the the B plot of this film, uh, as all the family shit's going on, and our our two our two little lovers are getting to know each other and realizing maybe they they could touch butts eventually. Um, the B plot is that uh, the one of the uncles in the Genuichi clan uh, f- like stole a bunch of money from their grandma and fucked off to America. And uh, in America, developed an artificial intelligence and sold it to the American government. Who, of Amer- course, fucked everything up. And uh, the American government went. Hey. You, you know what's even more fucked up? Because the, the inciting in- incident of this is that like uh, like s- people all around the world receive an email with like a unbreakable code, and our main character cracks it almost. Uh, and, uh, he gets, uh, because of the cracking that gets done, uh, this AI, like, gets to break into Oz and starts fucking up the infrastructure because in this future, like, everything's tied to the internet and, and, like, our, it's really unrealistic how, like, you know, securities and defense forces and, like, pacemakers are tied to the internet. That's super unrealistic. Yeah. Don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, like, can you imagine if the entire world relied on, like, two service providers, and if one of the servers broke, like, half of the internet would be gone, and you can't contact your employer or whatever? Man, that's super unrealistic. God, I hope. That's impossible. <laughs> can we but, can we talk just like how this motherfucker gets an email of, like, a bunch of fucking numbers, and the, 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 the like, title just says, solve this, and he just does it, just no questions asked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that that's the thing though, he is a what we colloquially will call a, a nerd. math nerd. Not just a nerd, a math yeah. nerd. This motherfucker does advanced trig. He did the climax. The climax of his film is him doing advanced trigonometry in his head so hard he gets a nosebleed. The part's that's really good, based, actually. <laughs> It was yeah, really awesome. Wrong. Like it was fucking awesome. But like, like in in, in, no. in the digi- in the Digimon movie, it was like friendship comes together and 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 a cannon shoots the bad guy. And this one, it was like mathletes. Yeah. Honestly, like I can kind of relate. If I suddenly got a stupid puzzle from an unknown number, you you know your ass. I would try to solve it. Oh hell yeah! Not gonna kidding? lie, if I got like a Sudoku puzzle or some shit, I would definitely do that shit. Yeah, definitely, right? <laughs> D- Doku gets a Sudoku puzzle in in his email, and he's like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna solve this shit!" And like two days later, the Pentagon explodes. <laughs> that would Can be you imagine? <laughs> that that would actually be a net positive. Not only did he solve a cool puzzle, also he got rid of evil in the world. A uh, parody satire. We- parody satire. The We Hate Anime podcast does not reflect the the views and point of uh, uh, opinions of the people that are present on its uh, episode. Fuck America! <laughs> Fuck America! Hey, you're not in America. You can't say that. Fuck America. Yes, I yeah. can. 
That's why I can't. <laughs> no, no. The, the racial hierarchy states that uh, because of uh, the white power, we can say other countries can fuck themselves, but they cannot say that. Uh, we're we an ethno state. <laughs> we're a white ethno state. What are you talking about? Ah, uh, America. Just like Summer Wars. <laughs> Uh, Man, I just, fuck. No, I, just, I wanted to say something about the whole internet. Oh, yeah, I just love the thought process of whatever fucking US general greenlit the whole thing. Oh, right. Yes, we have this hacking AI. How will we test it? Let's attack our ally that is connected to us through a service that everybody uses. The worst part Perfect. is it's okay. not even, like, unrealistic. Like, that's, the, that's definitely a thing the US Army would fucking do. <laughs> That, no, no, that's like, the I, most I, I, American I, I, thing. I can believe that. It's the most relatable part of the entire movie. But but here's the thing. If, if the, uh, that is like like tr- like 100% but that, that would happen. But it wouldn't happen to fucking Japan because yeah. Japan is like a a, a relatively health, healthy capitalist country. Uh it would they fucking do it to Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh fuck Elon Musk being like we'll coo whoever we want for our blood diamonds to fuel to fuel our rockets to Mars that explode in the atmosphere. Look man, on one hand we destabilized an entire country with a powerful entity that nobody could stop. On the other hand, we made a true AI. So who's to say if it was right or wrong? True. I, I actually, you know, I genuinely love uh the, the the AI is named Love Machine. It's a good name, yeah. Yeah. I fucking lo- I love everything about Love Machine is the best. He's 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 literally a, like uh, his battle design is like themed after like uh like like uh like Buddhist or or Indian like religious figures. It looks but he's so more like a cool. he's like a, a like a Loki. Like, cause that, that, he's a fucking trickster. It's fucking he's so fun and and evil. Like the first thing he does when our character meets him is that he jumps on his face and beats the shit out of him. <laughs> it's also very commendable that they com- uh, convey this entire chaotic energy and this tricksterism, as you said, because I also f- thought about that when I watched it with zero dialogue on the, his side, or its side, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the closest thing to dialogue that Love Machine gets is snickering in his small form. Yep. Uh, and like it, it, it just it conveys like it conveys like the sinister air he has about him as well. Like Love Machine feel like the, the, Love Machine doesn't feel evil. Love Machine feels like it doesn't care. He's just for here for a good time. He does a little trolling. <laughs> <laughs> we do a little trolling. But God damn it, that's the name of the episode. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I, I just, I, not only do I love everything about Love Machine, I also love everything about Oz. Oz, like, aesthetically is so fucking cool. Yeah, Can you, can you believe this movie came out in, two, like, 2011? <laughs> nine. It came out in, like, 2009, nine. yeah. If, Holy shit. Um, if fucking, if Second Life looked like this, it'd be based. But alas. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever, okay, I know we talked about Digimon before. Have either of you happened to have played Digimon Cyber Sleuth? I have heard good things about it, but that's it. Digimon Cyber Sleuth is like it. I highly recommend playing it if you like JR. Like it's basically a Persona game. It's a hundred percent just a Persona game. Yeah, that's why. Um, and I don't mean SMT. I mean Persona. Oh. Um. Uh, and its plot is also just Summer Wars. Uh, <laughs> but but it's Summer Wars, but with. With Gainax poses. It's Summer Wars with Gainax poses. That's the best way to describe it. Um, and it has Eldritch Horrors in it. Like, like actual Eldritch Horrors. That game's really cool. Those games are really cool. There's two of them. Um, I highly recommend you play those. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm mostly bringing it up because I, re- I think it's really fucking funny that... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious to me that the first Digimon movie, or, well, OVA... Uh, Mamoru Soda copied it to make his first like feature length film, and then this Digimon video game Cyber Sleuth was like, "Hey, 
Summer Wars has, like, good ideas. Because that game takes place in a virtual world that is identical to Oz. Identical. The only di the only difference is that, like, not everything is cartoony. That's it. Like, there's, like, floating platforms and, like, unique areas that are, like, subdivided. And also their society is run off of it. It's fucking weird. Why why is why is why is Mamoru Soda films and Digimon so fucking incestuous? Oh yeah, that's right. There's a cousin fucker in the movie. <laughs> is is there also a cousin fucker in Digimon? <laughs> uh not a cousin fucker, but maybe a sister fucker. <laughs> oh, no. oh my well, god. I, I was just, this made me wonder, like, when did Mega Man Battle Network come out? Because that's a very similar in concept as well. That was, like, I was, that had to be, like, that was like 2005, 4? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. So, it, that's probably, more, pr probably more influenced by the Digimon movie than this, then. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah the first one came out in 2001. I, oh, I, shit. I really oh, fuck, hope... I am old. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I really hope uh, fucking Cap... Is it Capcom that owns those, yes. right? I really hope they get off their fucking ass and release those somewhere, yeah. please. Yes. Uh, a lot of those I get a bad you. rap because Mega Man fans uh, don't like RPGs because they're dumb. But uh, yeah. most of those Those are, are the good. best Mega Man games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Battle Network, I think, holds more space in my heart than traditional Mega Man or X. No, I love it. I, yeah, fuck you. But... Don't I don't like Mega Man, but I love Legends and Battle Network. Yeah, that's fair. You should play uh, Command Mission. <laughs> the game's a game. Thank you, uh, Doku. I, I'm I'm good, glad to know that that video game is, in fact, a video game. It's uh, it, it has the same combat system as Mega Man X. I'm not Mega... No, I'm a Final Fantasy X. Oh. What the fuck's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> but Mega Man, uh, you should play Mega Man X Command Mission. It has the same combat system as uh, Final Fantasy X. The, 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 there is one brain cell marked X in Doku's brain and just fires off, and all the ga games with X in the title. <laughs> brain <laughs> cell X. X. <laughs> it's the fucking. He's, he has the Sigma virus, and that's his only brain cell. A true Sigma male. Okay, <laughs> let, let's, let's move on. <laughs> Well, you, you don't want to keep talking about Sigma males. Uh, there's a real Sigma male in this movie. And he's there the, is. Uh, he's the cousin fucking Jinuichi. Fucking. Okay. Uh, I think, like, it's super weird that the very first thing you see about this character. I don't remember all their names. I'm bad with names. Uh, Doku said that he was going to pull up the uh, Wikipedia article and check all their names, but there's too many names. Yeah, I haven't. I don't expect right you now. to actually do that. <laughs> Uh, this dude, the very first thing you see from him is him having heard that the female uh, protagonist has a husband to be is running around their family house saying, where is he? I'm going to kill him. I missed my chance to fuck my cousin. Yeah, uh, that's Shoda. <laughs> I remember his name, but I that's fucking that... hated him. <laughs> it's verbatim. He says those exact words in the movie. It was very brave of Mamoru Hosoda to include that line. <laughs> hey, hey, um, uh, Mamoru Hosoda included a character named uh, the most. The worst character in his movie is named Shota, proving that everything that has to do with the Shota tag is always terrible. <laughs> True. Dab on pedophiles. We dab on pedophiles. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. I, I'm joking, oh. of course. Uh, because you can't be a pedophile if you can't get any women. Oh! Oh! Ooh! Mmm! Yeah! Look, look, look. Let's, let's not alienate our viewer base here. <laughs> True. I just lost two of the Patreons we have. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this, this dude... I, you know what? I do want to give him some props. Because at, at the very end... At the very end, he almost says it's okay that someone else fucks his cousin. Yeah, he he, he yeah. accepts uh, Kenji at the end. So yeah. it, it's all fine. Despite the fact that he's a fucking idiot. Well, he's a cop. We can't expect That's much. Uh, uh, okay, 
So, ACAB only applies to cops, but also everyone in the Jinuichi clan, except for, like, three people, are also uh, work for the government. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's fine. They're not cops. <laughs> It's also really fucked up that... <laughs> it's super fucked up that when the uh, entire infrastructure is down, the only thing that can unite them is one 90-year-old woman who dies the day later. <laughs> I'll spoil this for Summer Wars, but uh, I've, at this point, watched the, watched the movie. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> Honest, honestly, though, I get that, because when she makes that goofy smile and you see she's missing most of her front teeth, I was in love with that old lady. Like, oh, it's such a perfect shot. Yeah. She's the best. I love... Okay, so there's... The, one of the best scenes of the entire movie uh, is the... the There's multiple dinner scenes, because, like, eating as a family is a big, like, thematic thing in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And there's the dinner scene where they're all sitting around eating, and then the uncle decides to show his ass. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, so you know that AI that's destroying everything? I made it. I used that money that I that, that you gave me that everyone thinks I, that I stole. I used that money and I went to America and I designed this AI so you'd be proud of me. All so these deaths are on money. my hands and all for you. I couldn't have done it without you, Mima. Yeah. <laughs> and then she tries to fucking skewer him with an aginata and jewels. And the whole time she's doing it, too, it's some of the best animation in the movie. Like, because he's falling backwards. It's like a tracking shot, and he's falling backwards over all the tables, and each individual food item falls off the table, and each table he knocks over is knocked over in a different way. And the entire time, she's just fucking advancing on him with the Naginata. And it's so so fucking... It's so fucking... I I just love that old lady. I wanna... She's the the best character in this movie. (laughs) And right. a- after that, she she gets uh she she calls uh the the what's the boy's name what's the boy's Kenji. name? She calls Kenji into the room. <clears throat> Kenji get in the down, fucking room. And they play <laughs> they play Hanafuda. Uh, the, the one mini game in Yakuza Zero that I can't get a hang on. It it it's the only like Japanese uh like board game I kind of know how to play. <laughs> Really, I'm the opposite. Like, I can play Mahjong, I can kind of yeah. get Shogi, but Hanafuda, zero. Mahjong's the only one I know how to play. Based. Uh, I, the only, okay, the thing about Hanafuda, I don't know what, like, the the winning combinations are, but I know what cards go together, <laughs> so I can play it. Okay. Uh, and it, it's, it is, a in, in the movie, you even see our main character, uh, they, they play Hanafuda three times. Mm-hmm. The first time, cause it's a, it's a family game. Uh, the first time he's reading all the fucking rules. The, it, there are a lot of rules to Hanafuda. I've tried to read them all. It's not worth it. I don't have that much time. <laughs> uh, and it's just, she's playing Hanafuda w- with him and, uh, she's just like, Hey, I got, a, I got a little too worked up there. Uh, I want you to promise that you'll take care of her, uh, of my of my granddaughter. Oh, and and he's like, and uh, this is this is after they find out that she's, she's been fucking lying to them. <laughs> yes, yep. yes, because it could because like early on, uh, after <laughs> uh, because he he almost solved the 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 like numbers that were sent to him. The entire Japanese media is painting him as the person who did it. Uh, yeah. just like the media do. Fake news, am I right, guys? Hell yeah. yeah I, ha- I just have to say that I'm really glad that this entire conflict gets resolved in, like, the first third of the movie because the moment it turned out, oh, that he's, you know, my boyfriend, but uh, it's all a lie, I was like, oh, no, is this going to have this whole lie revealed scene at the end where everybody is angry and the protagonist is started? No. It gets solved in, like, the first first. Yeah. Fuck off. We we have more important themes to deal with. Thank like, you. Like, the second day he's there is when, like, <clears throat> that just immediately just falls apart. And then, like, no one cares yeah. after that. Yep. And, and after it all falls <clears throat> apart, like, it's not a big dramatic scene and everyone hates him. Yeah. He simply stands up, looks at everybody, and says, 
yeah, I'm sorry about this, uh, but I had a lot of I, I, the first <laughs> hanging out, being with your you and your family was the first time I really felt like I was part of a family, and I just want to thank you guys. And then he bows, and everyone's like, "Yeah, you're cool." <laughs> it, it's it's and then, so touching. And then the cop arrests him. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. To be fair, uh, this cop. Uh, <laughs> it's really weird. Like this movie paints every like like service worker in the biggest best light they possibly can, except for government workers who are all nimka poops. Uh, <laughs> but not cops. Fuck cops. A cab baby. Yeah. Uh, our one cop character is the biggest piece of shit, and uh, <laughs> a biggest piece of shit pedophile incestuous bastard. Uh, although I will Combo, say this, baby. at some point in the story, it they, he it is said that he is a second cousin. Yeah, and in the American South, that is considered okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I heard that, I was like, oh, "That's that's pretty normal." And then my the rest of my brain kicked in and was like, no, it's not. You, this is, you just live here. Just shut the fuck up. Well, I mean, we haven't touched on uh, Natsuki, the girl who has crush on uh, the fucking uncle that left. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. The uncle was adopted. Still. <laughs> but he's still related to her great grandfather. Yeah, he's he he's an illegitimate son. Child. He's still he's still related. Yes, yes, but like. They have less blood together than like a uh, second cousin. He's like, like he's like thirty not years older. <laughs> okay, that parts that parts where it gets weird. <laughs> okay, but I'm I'm not saying I ship them. I'm saying she had a childhood crush. Yeah. You know, it happens. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's not a child because she mean... bases she bases like the story about Kenji on him. That was really, really I, that was really fucked up when that was revealed. It was like, hey, isn't that exactly like our weird, uh, s- like thief uncle? And, and everyone was like, yeah, it is. And they're just fucking making fun of her to her face. Yeah. <laughs> but he's hot though. Uh, he do be he do be pretty hot though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, what What do you mean? No, you can't get down with people who develop uh, uh, AIs. No. And wait, wait a second. Why are you agreeing with me, Tid? You're the straight on, on this podcast. The the bisexual should be agreeing with me, <laughs> not, not you. I mean, look, I, I know a hot-coded character when I see one. Hot-coded? T- 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 you know that's you, fair. You, you, I don't, f- I don't you mean think to tell hot, me, uh, but he is hot-coded. I think you're. I think you're a coward, and I think you uh, haven't seen the right guy yet. No, in all honesty, I was just trying to imitate the girl, and I think that got lost in translation. <laughs> <laughs> you you were trying to put yourself in a girl's shoes. Oh my god! They, they were pretty small. I shoes. am living. Uh, all I'm all I'm saying, Tid, <sighs> is that like trans rights, human rights, and I I I think you should be the real you. You have I seen them to the. Mom, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting bullied on a podcast where I'm a guest. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, every single person I know who's seen Utena is a trans girl right now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I haven't seen it, and that's the one thing stopping me. <laughs> I press play on it. I press play on it, and I get sent to the straight dimension for a day. <laughs> seen what? Actually, I lost that. Utena. We oh. Hey, I know a lot of straight... No. <laughs> I know a lot of cis people who watch Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, Tid reevaluating everyone he knows. Oh, no, they're all queer. God damn it. <laughs> Actually, yes. I've seen the movie, that's it. I haven't seen the show. Oh, oh that that's weird, considering the movie is pretty much a direct sequel. <laughs> I didn't get that at all. I just I was having a good time. <laughs> it's a beautiful movie. I I still need to watch all of it. Yep, I do too. Eventually. Uh, but yeah, uh, Summer Wars. Uh, there <coughs> is like it's kind of like the, the the only thing really left to talk about is is like like Hanafuda is used in this game as like the big like fight 
uh, thing because because Love Machine loves games, and they're like, hey, how do we how do we get this this big AI that has absorbed like thirty percent of all users uh, to like give that up and like save the world? They're like, oh, let's play Hanafuda with them. And I, I I think it's pretty clever. Like, hey, how can we like bankrupt this millionaire in accounts? in a very quick way over a pretty short term by skewering the stakes in our set. Oh yeah, gambling. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, so the first time I watched this movie, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> like, like I'm sure both of you right now, because none of you know anything about Hanafuda, like, uh, you just hear them saying, boar, uh, uh, boar, oak, uh, koi, 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 koi. <laughs> That doesn't mean something. <laughs> so, so just to explain, koi koi. So, uh, the the point of Hanafuda is to collect collections of cards, and there's like ten different categories, uh, including junk, which has like twenty cards in it. Uh, and when you get a complete collection, you either say uh, you either take the points, which would be the value of the collection, or you say koi koi. Where you uh, double, it's basically going double or nothing, where you put up, uh, you don't collect the points, and you can keep earning points. But, the first person to actually, like, collect their points wins that round, and you lose the points you would have collected. Hmm. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's 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 a pretty, it, it's a really fun game. Uh, I recommend buying the latest Soccer Wars game. Uh, it has a, <laughs> I realize, really weird, I'm, I... I'm, I'm suggesting a visual novel with bad uh, uh, action game mechanics, but it has a pretty in-depth Hanafuda minigame that it does not call Hanafuda because why would it call the thing that would alienate white people? Um, yeah, in a game called Sakura Wars. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, we listen. White people hear Sakura, they start thinking of Naruto, they think it, it's probably good. Uh, that's how it works, Ted. Come on, we okay. all know white people. I have to say, with the Hanafuda scene, like my brain just transplanted uh, a scene of a roulette or poker game from a Bond movie onto that scene. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I, I guess that's what's yeah. happening. Yeah, it, it doesn't like another movie would have like if this was like an like a, a Hanafuda sports anime, you would have had the side character being like, oh, they've collected every single junk piece and they're about to say koi koi so they can keep collecting points. Isn't this yep. fascinating? And it's like, no. Uh, we're just gonna very quickly scream koi koi while lights flash and you get confused and amazed. While I, mean, I cry. Look, I like you. Uh, I like Nobuyuki Fukumoto's manga. I read all of Akagi. I can get behind that. <laughs> the and the my favorite scene in this movie uh, is in this one, and it's where they run out of uh, of accounts. They they're down to uh, 56, uh, 54, 74 accounts, and they need seventy five in order to afford the ante, and uh, they're about to lose, and then like the number rolls to seventy five. As this little German boy appears and he says, I'll lend you my account in German. And it, yep. they don't say it, it's just in dialogue. You have to. I, I took German so I could actually read it. Uh, I mean, it auto, it yeah, auto translates like, to Japanese over yeah, time, right? Yes. Uh, but, like, I wasn't. Uh, I, I was watching the dub, and the dub doesn't have subtitles for that shit, for that stuff. That's weird. Um, yeah. Weird. It is weird, whatever a dub doesn't do that. Um,. But, like, it's so touching, because in this moment, because the movie is, like, it is it is about the connections we make with people, not only family, but outside of family. Like, it's, it's very, like, it's, the themes are so well interwoven into this film. Like, even down to, like, one of the biggest moments, that, that scene where Granny's calling everyone she's ever known in her entire life, it, like, it, like, like cements the fact that this movie is about the connections we make with people and it uses family as the anchor but then like a wider society because we have w w society unites against a force that would that is gonna wipe out reality and like it's so fucking beautiful everyone bang like like gangs together gives like 
they get a fucking 10 million avatars or something like that, and you just see this one speech bubble that appears, and it's like, please take our accounts and save our precious families. And I'm like, ah! Yeah, that's the part that made me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. good. It reminds me of that scene in uh, New Vegas that truly got me. It's a, a dialogue where... Uh, Joshua Graham in the DLC says that everyone has a family and then you have a tribe, a family of families. And I was like, shit, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> I, thought you were going, it, I thought you were going to say, yeah, I killed your uh, brother. He was a bitch and so are you. <laughs> no. But also, I think it's uh, very elegant that it introduces that theme at the very beginning when they talk about Oz in this, like, uh sp- uh, oh, speech talk uh, by, by, by the system and it says at the end yeah but the most important part here in Oz are connections and it yeah. pops by, back around to this global society because of that and it's very good like, e- even setting like the film like half and half in the internet even even that thematically cements this idea of people being connected together because what like e- even back in 2009 like th- that was like when the internet was just really taking off even yeah, back I've... then like the internet was something that could connect anyone to anyone else yeah yeah cuz like facebook it, was just getting is... big when like this movie came out yeah, it was before widespread uh, smartphones, but I really love the fact that like half the people in this movie use a DS to connect with the internet and fight. <laughs> hey, it's like good <laughs> good choice. DS slaps. Yeah. I I love the idea how that like in the in this future, which I think it's 2014 in this movie. Uh, it's 2010. Uh, 2010. In in 2010, uh, not only can you connect to this like, you, not only can you connect to this basically MMO with any digital device, including a landline telephone. Uh, but also, uh, there are, you can play, uh, the fighting game with any device. Like, like you have the fucking dude fighting the, the love machine on a fucking DS. And it's like, how the fuck does that work? How does this game interface work for you? You know, you know we that. are in the dystopian timeline because Gmail doesn't have a fighting mini game. But, yeah, God. that's true. If Gmail had an arena brawler, maybe I'd you, you check my email more often. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, Arxis yeah, should make I... a Gmail game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every single like Google uh, icon gets turned into a fighter, and they have to fight each other. And like in in the story mode, like when they lose, that's that's uh, Google deciding that they're going to discontinue that service. <laughs> Get season pass to suplex Cortana. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I really do love this movie. Um, I it is uh, Hasoda's best film, um, in my opinion. I know a lot of people like the girl who leapt through time more. Uh, I also know people like Wolf Children as well. Oh, I forgot he did that one. Um, Wolf Children's a pretty cool movie. Uh, but like, I feel like you'll. Get, I think you'll get more out of it if you're already furry adjacent. And, like, I'm adjacent to some furries, but not to the community. I just like people who happen to be furries. Um, it, some of my best friends are furries. My best friend is a furry. Uh, oh, boy. And, and she's, uh, she's, she's, she's cringe. You hear that, Nicole? You're cringe. <laughs> Where's well, your face so fair, my old bitch? Yeah, where's our other podcast, you slut? Uh, I have, uh, uh, this movie is about a group of furries who saved the world, so there is that. True. Oh man, I I I, I don't want to belabor it enough. Furries. If you've never seen, if you've never seen Summer Wars, like this is it is such a great movie, and it's even though it came out in two thousand and nine, like this movie could have come out even today like even with the flip phone shit where you might second guess it but like in japan flip phones are still popular yeah. i think it's more timely than when it came out honestly with the whole global society and internet connecting everything yeah, yeah no it's fair to say mamoru hosoda uh predicted metal gear yeah <laughs> it's, i uh, honestly now i thought if i thought about it i think uh, i'm going to say something pretentious as per episode as i should uh, Summer Wars is the optimistic version of Lena. 
I need to watch Lane so I uh, can know if I should be. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that means. <laughs> oh no, but but crowd. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I I you know what? Okay, Tid, I'm gonna ask you. Do you think yep. Lane, w- w- as a show, should be something this podcast talks about? Yes. Okay. I I want to see Moth and Frog have their brains melted live. I mean, I don't, I don't. I do like listen, shots to... of power lines. So. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Tid, Tid, you were on an episode where I had a meltdown, and you're like, "Yeah, <laughs> I want to see that again." <laughs> yep, it's entertaining. What can I say? My brain, uh, I have stupid brain, and so for some reason, uh, serial experiments lane and Elfin lied, like are in the same space in my brain for some reason. That that's a really bad space to be in. Please get get laid out of there. She doesn't deserve this. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like I've never I've not even seen Lane, but I have seen Elf and Lied multiple times because I used to like that because I used to have bad opinions. I I used to think it was so cool when the dog gets killed. What the fuck was wrong with me? Man, edgy teenage hood is a scary face, and I'm glad I dodged Elf and Light by yep, then. Yep, I did too. Uh, the first time I heard about it was when <laughs> fucking Demolition D talked about it. Mm. Uh, though I have to say, uh, the opening still slaps. That can stay. Yeah, yeah the, op- the opening's pretty great. Uh, I Listen, uh, most bad shows at least give a good opening or ending. That, that's just, that's like the little law of anime. If you don't have a, yeah. if you don't have a good opening or ending, your show has to be good. There's, there's no, <laughs> like, like, if you, wanna, if you want to find out if something's, if a show's good or bad, just look at its opening or ending. If, if they're both bad, then you know you should watch it. That's how you know Musashi Gando is a masterpiece. I don't know what that is, but I sound, I, fa- I feel like that's a meme. Really? It was like this 2004, I think, series that lost, didn't even make a bunch of keyframes because their budget was half a shoestring. And the opening is like the loudest, shittiest rock rap you could ever imagine. It breaks your ears. Hell yeah. Uh, sounds like the good shit. The, I think the most noetic scene from that uh, series is when, uh, because the entire premise is, what if Musashi had a gun, right? <laughs> There's Musashi walking through city uh, and it's like, wow, dazzling. But they never animated what dazzled him and it just walks away and that's it. That's good. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I want to see a sequel to that. But it's what if Nobu, uh, Oda Nobunaga had a tank. Uh, and, and and on that note, I think this has been another episode of the We Hate Anime Podcast. Wait, we didn't even talk about the fights. <laughs> uh, They're cool. The, yeah, there's not like they're visually really interesting. Yeah. Um, but I don't have a lot to say about. Okay. Them. Then we can move on. <laughs> I think like Doku, it's Doku, sort of... Doku, fuck you! You said you want to talk about them. Talk about them. Um. I like the part where they're like going through the the, the, the book part of Oz, and they just started like he's just that part's really cool. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> it's, a, it's really cool. I mean, it, also the part I where think, like, like the centerpiece of Oz starts like turning into like houses. That part's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or when the love machine gets so big, it's basically uh, Oz is part of it, and it attacks it then yep. as well. And then um, like. That part was so wrong. And then the whales give uh, Kazuma uh, of a of, of five star gacha pool. <laughs> I fucking love that. Like they they turn her like Kitsune avatar into the most Kitsune ass Kitsune. Which, to be fair, it is incredibly fitting that the heroine in this gambling climax is a Kitsune. Can I just say, Mwah, yep. perfect design. Yep. Uh, I am so in- I would love to have you guys watch the other Mamoru Hosoda films oh. because none of them like they're all really good but none of them have as good a structure as Summer Wars like Summer Wars le- like it's just really cohesive and it really leads into each other like it's so good and then you watch something like like uh, A Boy and His Beast which is another movie I really love but in A Boy and His Beast they'll just be like and then a time skip and then you'll just keep moving on in the story, and it's like, wow, thanks, I hate it. Then the boy turned into Hitler, and his last name was Jaeger. No. <laughs> uh, 
on, on the topic of the fight scenes, I was very wary at the beginning when it was like, oh yeah, this like 12 year old is the super cool prodigy of fighting games that everybody loves, but nobody knows he's actually this kid. Uh, but when later it's explained, yeah, he got bullied as a kid, but then his grandfather taught him uh, martial arts. I was, I was like, damn, I can't hate on that. It's cool. <laughs> Okay, that is cool, but how did learning martial arts transfer into a computer Don't game? worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about uh, it. No, I, I, I'm totally, like, here's the deal. There is There are so many, like, small details like that in this movie that I can completely ignore because of that good old-fashioned rule of cool. Yep. Like, yep. I, as long as, like, you can do stupid shit as long as it's fucking cool, dude. That, that's all you need. Honestly, when you have a boomer set, talking about how they taught their nephew how to fight using uh, computers, I'll believe it. <laughs> yeah. God, I, I, I just want to say, like, that that fisherman dude, I... Oh, he's great. I... But he feels like you see him and he's like this loud and boisterous dude. And at first you're like, wow, this is that annoying uncle we all have. <laughs> but then he's also yep. the most loving fucking dude in the world. And it's like, I hate, I wish I had a family half as good as this. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, now it makes sense. He taught martial art. He is a fisherman. He probably mains May in this God universe. Damn it, I hate he's him responsible now. for Tatsukeki. <laughs> He 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 taught he taught his he, he taught his nephew the the art of the totsugeki. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if you're watching this and you ha- I I don't I don't know how you've gotten this far into the podcast considering how much we've spoiled. Uh, but if you haven't watched Summer Wars, you really do owe it to yourself to watch it because it's it's we're currently in summer and I unironically think that this is the perfect summer movie because yeah. it just it so perfectly captures the season it's I've... uh it's hard to watch <clears throat> legally uh because it's not streaming anywhere from what i could find no so just buy it on blu-ray you'll like it trust me <laughs> yes if not for the po- if not for this podcast i probably wouldn't have watched this movie at all and i don't uh i recommend it despite that it's a great movie i'm very glad i'm here uh, I, yeah, I need um, to get this on Blu-ray eventually. Uh, what what would you rate it out of ten, fellow gamers? Uh, don't actually rate it out of ten. I will ban you from the podcast. <laughs> Good because I was like, oh 8. no, 8. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do- Doku wasn't prepared. Doku, you've been on three other episodes. How how uh, two other episodes? How often have I asked you to rate things? You dumb you've only bitch. been on one of them. Look, look, Fuck season you. two started, we have a new opening song, uh, many things can change, <laughs> who know. Either way, 8.8 out of 10, throw oh me out. <laughs> oh god, we have a new, oh god, we have a new intro, we totally are in the new season of We Hate Anime, Let's oh my go. god, I hate, I hate you for putting that brain <laughs> into my skull. <laughs> ah! <laughs> And with that, <sighs> we have been the We Hate Anime Podcast. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Links will be in the description. Uh, you can follow me at uh, uh, AnnieMikeRu. Uh, you can follow uh, Tidoidu at CuteMudePrude. And you can follow Doku at SudokuFGC. Uh, uh, Tidoidu also has a fantastic YouTube channel uh, called uh, Tidoidu's Last Minute Essays. Just last minute essays now. Last minute essays, great, legitimately, just fantastic. Like I highly recommend uh, listening to, or well, listening, but watching. Uh, not that I should imply the videos you work very hard on should be used as podcast material. No, no, they, they, the video editing is the worst part of them. I admit that. Uh, I had also. Uh, if you were interested in my exploring about Library of Arena earlier, this video should be up in. I know, a week or two from now, I have to finish the game. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, and you can, uh, if Doku decides to get off his sweet summer buns and actually stream something, you yeah. can uh, follow him on Twitch. Uh, what's your Twitch again? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Doku5. Um, I'm trying to try to start streaming again. Work has been a bitch to me lately. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, you're telling me Frog hasn't been on, ep- on an episode of this podcast in like three months. Man, we had we had to push the recording this episode back by like two fucking days because yesterday I didn't get home from work till eight o'clock at night. Yeah, that sucked. But hey, what can you do? Honestly, today worked better for me <laughs> because after a long day of talking in English to people who can't speak English, it's nice to speak to some native speakers and like get everything off my chest. God, I fucking hate my students. <laughs> <and> shit. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Doku also, uh, not Doku, sorry. Tid, you also are on a uh, stream, as, another stream on, on uh, Twitch.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. T- uh, Twitch.tv slash Council Mechanica. We talked with uh, Doku about that before. Yeah. Uh, uh, where we, me and my co-host Void, play some mostly plot-heavy video games. And and it's it's really it's really a good time. Um, uh, <laughs> Void will be on in a future episode, probably on the next Katana Gatari episode. Oh um, yeah, just just because I need I need I need. Tid is gonna sit in the background while I suffer. I need someone else to su- like be angry with me if if it comes to that. I just like popcorn, man. It's good popcorn. <laughs> yeah, if, if you go back and listen to the last Katana Gatsuri episode, you can practically hear the sound of him eating popcorn. <laughs> While my mind is frying like fucking overburnt breakfast. It's good fun. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful time. Bye-bye. <laughs>